Hello everybody, uh, my name is Kala Siddiqui and in this video I'm going to show you the unboxing and using of the brand new Garmin uh, GPS which has uh, the uh, Amazon Alexa built in to it. So let's see what it's all about, what it can do and this is uh, called the Garmin uh, Drive Smart 65. So that's that's what it is Garmin uh, smart drive 65 so let's see what's what it's all about so I got this from uh, Amazon and uh, price was pretty high somewhere around two hundred dollars so let's see what it has to offer okay now when it says this product is ready to use or if it doesn't say some requires activation especially the ones that you buy from Walmart uh, the the ones uh, that require activation is in, is for uh, theft protection so if you don't activate it this simply cannot be used and when you activate it it looks for the serial number and the serial number will match that the Garmin unit was actually uh, scanned at the cash register so that's what the activation is. So this one is ready because it was purchased online. So it's basically already activated and everything. So there is no need to call in for any activation or anything. It's ready to go. Okay. So let's see. What else do we have here? Inside the box. Okay, so we have the suction cup, the good old Garmin windshield suction cup. Now make sure you understand that in some places uh, it's against the law to mount this on the screen um, on the windshield. Then you have to get a different type of mount. Uh, for example, you need to get one of those uh, little plates that uh, will mount on the dashboard and then that little dash I'm surprised this one doesn't come with one usually when you buy a new Garmin it comes with that so let me see if I have one here to show you one second okay so this is the one I was talking about this was mine this didn't come with this but I was expecting to get one of these. So what this is, is you simply peel it off. Let me show you. Now I cannot peel this off. Can you imagine? There. So you peel this off. And what you do is you remove the little glue from the back. Like this. You remove that. And then you, this is sticky. You put this on your dashboard, uh, at the bottom of the dashboard, and then what you do is you take your GPS and you attach it to this. You attach it, attach it like that, like this. And your GPS will be uh, legal because it won't be on the windshield. These, this is in some states, not in like, I believe in California, you can't have it on the windshield. I'm not sure. Uh, the, what are the you know legalities and whatnot so yeah this normally this comes with a new garment this didn't come with one so that's one thing you want to take in consideration let's see okay now uh, you know how this mounts this is very easy it's a, it's a no-brainer you snap it in put your uh, suction uh, ball and snap it out when you're done Okay, this is a good thing. They finally were thinking about this to give you a USB and not a, any USB. This is a 2.4 amp USB if you can see that. So that's a good good power, good, uh, good, very high power USB port to charge your phone. And you have auxiliary, auxiliary audio, which is good. That's also good. And your charger that plugs into your Garmin okay now let's see what else is 
the sync cable micro USB no mini USB it's not micro it's mini USB to standard USB to update your GPS okay okay let's okay so now I'm gonna set these aside set those aside and let's plug this puppy in and see what we get now the battery might be charged but you know just to be on the safe side I'm gonna plug it in let's see okay so that's the first protective screen goes out and then you have another protective screen for the ultra shiny display and there you go okay so here we have to choose we have to choose our country you have to choose your language what language you want okay so you need to read you know all the end user license agreements and whatnot uh, one thing i realized that this doesn't have a light sensor like an ambient light sensor uh, to see how bright a uh, uh, place is in order to adjust the screen brightness accordingly so this one automatically went to night mode because it's dark here so i mean it's night but this studio is pretty bright and it's still not going so anyways you have to accept all in order to proceed so now in order to get live traffic updates and uh, use Amazon Alexa and all the good stuff you must connect this to the internet you can connect this to internet uh, with uh, Wi-Fi or you can connect it to the internet with your smartphone to connect it to the internet with your smartphone you must uh, uh, enable tethering and when you enable tethering the smartphone will act like a wireless router and provide wireless connection for all your uh, you know Wi-Fi devices in your vehicle okay so for now I'm gonna skip because I have to uh, brighten the screen before I could do that so I'm gonna skip those for now agree go to settings and let's go to the screen display brightness oh boy there you go now that's more like it now we can see okay all right so you notice what when you go to settings and when you go to let's say uh, any any sub menu like display and all that you could you don't have to tap the back multiple times you could hold it down and it will take you back to the main menu okay so I noticed this one has a lot of features that normal uh, older garments don't have it mm. let's see if it has voice command voice command this doesn't have a voice command okay so you have to use Alexa Alexa what's the time see not connected so no Alexa so let's connect the puppy okay let's connect it you must connect Bluetooth and Wi-Fi both to your smartphone and your smartphone must be in tethering in order to act like a router Wi-Fi so let me see which one am I gonna use okay I'm gonna use the 5 gigahertz but the signal is weaker you know that the 2.4 gigahertz signal is much stronger
So let me use this one. Okay, so now I'm going to enter my password. For a minute, I'm going to pause. Okay, so I entered the password and let's join. Let's see how long it takes to connect. It should be pretty rapid. Okay, and all that. Do you consent to government collecting using or sharing your device data? That's fine. I have no problem. When you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to be worried about. Okay, so register your product, skip the registration. Okay, so we are connected. The Bluetooth is on. Let's go to settings. Bluetooth. Okay. It's enabled. Let's connect to Bluetooth. Search for Bluetooth devices. Beautiful. Okay. Pair. Okay, now I need to install this app, this app right here, Garmin Drive. I thought I had that, but let me see. I thought I had Garmin Drive. Let me see. I'm going to install Garmin Drive and I will proceed. Okay, so I didn't have Garmin Drive and it's available for download. So I'm going to download that puppy. Get Garmin Drive. It's downloading Garmin Drive. Bingo, let's open the app. Okay, so you have to agree to the privacy policy here. You have to agree to that. And you have to click next. You have to pay attention when the road when you're driving. It's kind of warning you about that. I don't know if you can see that. Agree to that. It's telling you what device you want to pair or use. So in this case, I'm using this with A, navigation. So it's pairing. Allow. Continue. Sign in. Okay, I have to put my password and all that. Okay, so it's telling me that now it is paired. Continue. Sure. Uh, can you play music from your phone to your vehicle stereo? Yes, with the Bluetooth I can. Sure. Yes. But I'm not in my car though right now, so we'll see what happens.
Okay, so it asked me to sign in with my Amazon account and I did that. Allow. Use location, no problem. And allow while using app. Don't enable the contact sync. And done. Dismiss, dismiss, and we are all done. Okay, so now what do we do? Let's see if this puppy works now. Alexa, what's the time? The time is 10.48 p.m. Okay, so the sound, the, the voice came from the phone. The voice came from the phone, meaning that this phone is supposedly hooked up to the car stereo, so the reply I got from here was actually sent to the car stereo, which is pretty slick, pretty good. I want to emphasize one thing, that your vehicle stereo must have Bluetooth capability to sync the sound to the car stereo from your phone. If it doesn't, then you have the auxiliary output from the cigarette lighter port, as I showed you earlier, this guy. You use the cigarette lighter port auxiliary from here to your car stereo in order to get the sound from the GPS to that. But to do that, you must disable the sound from Bluetooth and bring back all the sounds to the GPS unit. I'm going to teach you that next. Okay, so I successfully installed the Garmin uh, Drive app and I have to log in with my Garmin account. If you don't have one, you have to create a Garmin account. And this app will sync with your GPS for weather update, uh, traffic condition update, and all kinds of other cool stuff, including points of interest, guidance, road closure, you name it. The, the possibilities are limitless. Anyway, so we did this, uh, you know, chose the country and the language. And of course, you have to accept all the terms and conditions and agree. Okay, the smartphone service is disconnected. You click OK. Uh, let's see. Cannot connect to the Garmin Drive app. Make sure the app is open uh, on your phone. If the problem uh, persists, try restarting your phone. Okay, so let's make sure the app is running. And done. And okay. And let's see. You see that down arrow right there? The down arrow shows there's an update. There's an update available. So let's see what is the update. Right now this is hooked up hooked up to Wi-Fi, so it's getting all its updates through Wi-Fi. Okay, so it says we have a map update available. It takes two hours and 45 minutes. No, thank you. I don't have time for that. So, and actually there was also a software update. Let's see the software, um, how much time for that is required. Update available, let's see. Fifty-eight. Okay, now this is this is only fifty-eight megabytes. With respect to what the app will it will be, this is nothing. But still, because it says install all, you cannot cherry pick which one to install. So I'm not gonna deal with that right now. I'm gonna teach you how to use the unit. Okay. So let's see if the Alexa. What is the time? Okay, now did you notice that the time was replied in the speaker on the phone, not on the GPS? Now let me change that to the GPS. Mm, alerts. Let's see. These are the things you can change. For example, spo spoken traffic alerts you want enabled, uh, alerts and tones, buttons pressed, 
and all that all those are enabled now with Bluetooth audio setup you could cherry pick whether you want the voice to come out of the GPS speaker or out of the smartphone speaker okay so audio output if you if you choose uh, vehicle it will go through the phone to your vehicle so if you want the Garmin unit you have to click here and choose Garmin device save now when you choose Garmin device you also enable the auxiliary port which was by the cigarette lighter okay 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 so now the uh, Alexa in the media you want it in Garmin I'm going to set it up so as if you don't have your phone. So I'm going to close this as if I don't have the phone, okay? No phone, just the unit, okay? But you could always turn on the phone and mix that together. Okay. Phone calls. You could choose it to be on your Garmin device or on your phone. So now every single sound will come from the Garmin device, uh, from this unit, from the speaker on the back of this. It's not going to interfere with my phone. I could use my phone for something else. I could play radio, music on the car radio. All the navigation, everything, instructions will be on the Garmin device, including Alexa. What time is it? Let's go back. Alexa, what time is it? Okay, now it's coming from this unit. So I'm going to set this aside and let's just learn how to use this. When you get your GPS out of the box, the first thing you need to do is you need to connect to Wi-Fi to get the updates. Connect, uh, obviously you have to choose the language and all that good stuff. And then after that, these are the things you need to do. Install the Garmin app, which is this guy. This guy right here. You see that? I go back let me show you which I'm talking about you have to install that the Garmin Drive app and then you could go to settings and customize the GPS based on your specific needs each one's need are different uh, this is the update service you could do the update in order to get the update you don't even have to connect this to your computer because it has a Wi-Fi uh, internet access so it can do all the map updates system updates through the GPS without ever having to connect it to your computer just with the update uh, icon so map in vehicle on this one you click to set it up vehicle icon shown on the map you could choose what you want to be shown for your that's representing your vehicle so you could choose a car you could choose a truck you could you know possibilities are a lot and you can download more pictures from Garmin website these are the stock images that you can choose now none of these will mimic my vehicle I have an SUV but just for the sake of a better picture I'm gonna choose this one and save now the map view this is important to know map view if you choose 3d it will be three-dimensional so the map will not be like flat like this it will be like three-dimensional so basically, if this is the normal view, uh, let's see, let me show you. If this is the normal view, the vehicle will go like this, right? With a 3D view, it will be like this, and then the vehicle will go like that. Three-dimensional view. So I like the 3D, 3D view. If you choose north up, always north will be up if you choose this one. See how? The north will be up. Now, what's the problem with north up? If you're going south and you have to make a right turn, you will be making a right turn on the map, but in reality, you will be making a right turn in reality, I mean, but on the map, you will be going left. Because it, north is up, and if you're going south, your right will be this way. So that's very confusing. North up is very confusing. Be careful. Always choose 3D or track up. Track up means the whichever direction you're going will be up. So that, that would be that. Okay, so save 3D. Now map detail. Uh, normally I would like to choose more detail, not less. 
that's what I like. So you have more streets and more little details than normal. With normal, it will hide smaller streets and alleys, and uh, you know you will see major streets and roads and highways. But if you choose more, you will see everything. So that's why I like more. So that's what I'm gonna choose more. Okay. Now we have map themes. Uh, these are like different uh, maps uh, colors actually. So this is the normal garment. This is the like uh, Belgium, France, different themes. See the colors of the roads changed. So it's not a big deal, but you know, if you stick with standard, I like the standard one, the one that comes with it, because it requires getting used to the other ones. Okay, so I leave that. Map layers. Now, what are the map layers? There is one map uh, layer that you are traveling. One is your past history. So those are the layers. Uh, for example, and up ahead places, things that are, you're about to approach. If you click this, then you will see uh, icons of Star Starbucks and let's say um, fast food places, McDonald's, this and that. You will see, th you will see them pop up on, on, on the actual screen as you approach them if you wanna see uh, up ahead places. And then you could choose, like the up ahead places, you could choose what you want to see. If you want to see an upcoming gas station, if you want to see an upcoming bank or a restaurant, you could choose. For example, if you see the gas station, right? You could click here and change the priority. For example, the banks and ATMs have first priorities, gas station second, restaurants third, and so on. Or now restaurants have first priority, bank second, gas stations third. So that's what you drag in, drop, wherever the priority you want. I think the most important for a driver would be gas station. So I would choose the gas station, give it first priority. And then restaurants is the best thing for the, uh, for the driver. This is best thing for the car. This is the best thing for the driver. Now banks and ATMs, you, you know, comes in handy, but usually you have credit card and whatnot. So that's what I would choose. 3D buildings, you could choose to see the buildings in 3D or you could just see flat, nothing on, nothing. This is good, but this re uses more memory and slows down the GPS. Now it doesn't slow down uh, tremendously, but you know, slightly, because it requires more 3D graphical processing. Now 3D terrain is good because you actually see the mountains and the valleys and 3D, just like uh, Google images and maps, like 3D. Mm, uh, traffic is good to see. Parking, would you like to see the parking uh, lot? Like if you choose yes, then you will see the parking lots. If you choose no, then you will uh, not. So these are the things uh, of uh, park, parking uh, location, the uh, likelihood of finding a parking space. Now, if it's, it's if it's green, it's very likely that you will find parking. If it's, uh, if it's uh, orange, m medium likelihood, low likelihood, and uh, blue means un unknown. The, the data is unknown. So, so these are the things. And then free and, and not free parking, it tells you, you know. Like r right now, for example, if you see the likelihood of finding a parking on the street, the ones that are green, let me actually zoom in because you, you need to see this, this is very important. And this is only available on newer garments. You don't see this on the older garments. Okay, so if you look at the map on the right, the roads in which the likelihood of finding a parking mm, is, is green on the ones uh, that the bar is green and orange is, is m much less likely and red is like um, near, near impossible to find parking. So like if you're in downtown and you want to find parking, in which street it's more likely to find parking, those screens will have green bars in it. Okay, trip log is where you have been before. So, so if, you, if you, wherever you drove, it will show the trip log. I don't like that because it will confuse you. If, but it's good if, you, if you're going in circles, it will immediately catch the fact that you are actually going in circles. So that's the good part about that. Other than that, it's you know, not that important. Okay, so let's go down. 
and when we go down let's see history museums national parks these are the things that if you would like it to show up now national parks and history museums are okay to show up because there aren't very many of them very few of them are there so that's that's why it's okay save it okay so these were the map layers now auto zoom in is ena enabled what is the meaning of auto zoom if you're about to exit from a freeway and uh, you're going to smaller roads which where the streets are much closer then the map will zoom in where when you are on in the freeway the map will zoom out and show much more area so that's the auto zoom it's good to have it enabled but you could see for yourself it's something you will you will enjoy installed maps you have to see what we have here so in this unit we have uh, CN uh, city navigator CN stands for city navigator city navigator North America NT uh, 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 that is 2019.3 Parkopedia which is the national parks and then national parks version 2 and then we have city Nav navigator North America four squares this is for the information uh, of different businesses uh, North America uh, uh, DEM and then we have in North America NT uh, 2019.30 all um, this is the 3d basic version which shows the buildings in 3d this one is the regular all are enabled 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 you can uncheck any of these if you don't want them you could just check that like that and uncheck that now it doesn't hurt to have them all I, I don't see why would you uncheck it but you could um, and all of these are 2019 when we are already in 2020 that's be, that's the reason because i bought this from amazon so it's probably sitting in the shelf there for a year or i don't know six months so i'm gonna have to do the live update uh, to get the maps updated okay so we go back i didn't uncheck any of the maps okay and, uh, this is the route preferences this is very important to pay attention to because with this you, you will the gps will determine how to calculate your route and how to guide you based on your own preferences so let's see what it does okay route preview shows the route preview when starting the navigation that's pretty good I mean I don't have a problem with showing the preview uh, calculation mode faster time you could choose faster time off-road shortest distance faster time will take you to the uh, to the, your destination the soonest it but that means that means it could be longer distance. For example, it will take freeways, uh, maybe two, three freeways to get you there when you could have, uh, you, you will end up traveling, uh, having more mileage in your car uh, when you could have taken like 20, 30 traffic lights and got there in longer time, but lesser mileage in your car. So, well, I like faster time all the time because mileage is not that important in your own time being wasted however if you're renting a car let's say you're renting a truck from a rental car uh, rental truck company they will charge you by the mile and they don't care about the time they give you like one day rental let's say you're moving and you you're going from point a to point b and you have this rental truck that is being charged by miles you don't care if you get to and return the truck sooner to the truck uh, rental company for you it's more important to have lesser mileage on that truck so you don't get charged for like two three dollars per mile so that's something you need to take in consideration off-roading is good uh, uh, even even if you have to off-road it just takes you a straight line to your destination so this is only good if you have a off-roading motorcycle or a truck but it's not good at all for a regular car shortest distance is what i said about the you know going through multiple traffic lights and whatnot so i like the faster time i always calculation mode be faster time avoidance is very important why is it important because if you're driving a semi truck uh, or 18 wheeler or a bus or a big huge rv you cannot make u-turns so you want to avoid u-turns if you're driving a vehicle that's not allowed to go to highways then you want to avoid highways. For example, if you're using this GPS on a moped, on a small scooter that's not allowed to go to the freeway or a bicycle, this is what you want to avoid, okay?
but uh, I'm not going to avoid it because I don't even want to avoid U-turns because I'm driving an SUV which can make a U-turn with no problem. Now, ferries are obviously, or the ships, the little boats that are taking the cars across the river or across the lake or, you know, different types of situation. This is what you want to uh, uncheck. You want to check if you don't, if your car doesn't fit in a ferry. For example, an RV wouldn't fit in a ferry. A big old truck wouldn't. So carpool lanes you want to avoid if you're traveling alone because you could get a ticket if you're one person in a carpool lane. So uh, if you are not traveling alone, uncheck the puppy and this will take you through carpool lanes. I never travel alone, uh, especially in rush hours. I, I travel with my family, so I leave that unchecked. Unpaved roads. Now, unpaved roads are like dirt roads. Can your vehicle take an unpaved road? Uh, if yes, then you want to uncheck it. If your car is like a low profile, low rider car, and it doesn't handle unpaved roads very well, then you want to check it to avoid it. Whatever is checked is being avoided, okay? So if you check it, it's not gonna go there. All right, save. Uh, avoidance is disabled in my case. It will take me to easiest uh, locations. Custom, uh, uh, custom avoidances, or if you customize an avoidance, you could add an area. For example, you know a neighborhood is really rough and really there's a lot of crime and drive-by shooting and whatnot, and you want to avoid that area. So you can add. Or you can add to avoid a road. You could, uh, let's say, a road, you know very well that road has a lot of, like, uh, holes and bumps and um, a lot of times you, that road has high accident rate in could be a, a road where a lot of cars are hijacked or crime high crime area you can avoid that road you can add that road as an avoidance and uh, let's see on on toll roads it's asking you should it avoid toll roads or it should ask you always ask for example if you're if your calculation takes you to a toll road where you have to pay, uh, then this will ask you that, are you sure you want to go? Because in that the route you have chosen has a toll road and it will charge you like $10, $20. Now remember, in America, toll roads are not a big deal. But when I was traveling in Europe, uh, toll roads were pretty expensive. Some places were like 10, 15 euros to go through toll roads. Now, I still paid and went through the, those toll roads because the alternative was going through little villages in small roads and I would be paying twice as much in gas which would have cost me uh, a lot more traveling now if you're doing a sightseeing then you don't want to go tall roads you do want to go through little villages and you know enjoy the back country uh, so that's something that's your preference to see what you want <laughs> environmental zones if you want it to be uh, allowed or avoided. For example, there are factories with very, very heavy smoke with a lot of toxic air. Would you like to go there or you don't want to go there? So this is currently it's allow. Uh, but you could restrict that. Okay, restricted mode. What are these? Restricted mode is that the vehicle, uh, the, the GPS screen will not allow you to enter an address when the vehicle is in motion because it doesn't want you to use your hands to, uh, to, to control the GPS and endanger yourself. So this is something that you need to uh, basically be very uh, careful about. If you, uh, I always travel with my wife, so she's the one entering the addresses and whatnot. And well, that's one of the reasons we always get lost. Anyways, I was just kidding. So that's uh, uh, the restricted mode is enabled. Now, if you disable the restrict restricted mode, now the vehicle features are not disabled while the vehicle is moving. You can enter an address and, and change an address, add a point of interest, add a, a stop in your destination, between your destination, all those good things, uh, even when your car is moving. Okay, GPS simulation for indoor use only. Uh, this is also not, this is not only for indoor use, it's also, uh, good for tunnels. There are some long, long tunnels when we were going through Switzerland. These tunnels were like miles long. Now, if the GPS simulation mode wasn't enabled, uh, the GPS, the vehicle would have stopped as soon as we entered the tunnel 
uh, while uh, in simulation mode, the uh, GPS will assume your speed while you're inside the tunnel with no satellite signals based on your entrant, uh, speed, entrance speed. For example, if you entered that tunnel at 30 miles per hour, the GPS will assume your speed and simulate your location in the middle of the tunnel as you are approaching the other end based on your entrance speed. Uh, and also it will take in consideration the speed limit inside the tunnel. For example, if you entered the tunnel at let's say 30 miles an hour, but in the middle of the tunnel, the speed limit is 15, then it will assume that you will be obeying the law and traveling at that speed. That's posted, okay? Maps and vehicles, we have already went through that. It's the same thing we went to change the type of vehicle, map and whatnot. So that's, we don't need to go there again. And the navigation we did, let's see, what did we miss here? Uh, route preferences, wi wireless Bluetooth and wireless settings. I've already connected it to my iPhone you know, and uh, the phone is enabled, the music is enabled and the, and the Garmin drive is enabled. The Garmin drive, remember the icon I showed you? Just in case you forgot, this is the Garmin drive right here. And this app will allow me to, uh, to navigate with uh, a lot of live updates about road conditions, road closures, uh, construction zone, accidents, and you name it. So that's good. So all the smart phone devices and everything is enabled. Wi-Fi is enabled and, and, and everything. So that's good. Let's go back. Okay, driver assistant alerts and uh, uh, driver alerts and assistance. So driver assistant, it alerts you if you're crossing a railroad. If you're about to up approach where animals are crossing, like remember a lot of roads have like deer crossing, railroad crossing, school, curves, this and that. If you check this alert, it will alert you, but you have to choose. You have to choose if do you want to be alert when uh, you come across animal crossing? It doesn't necessarily have to be a deer. It could be a cow. It could be other animals, depending where you are. For example, if you're in Australia, it'd probably be a kangaroo alert. So these are the things based on where you live. Railroad crossing alert. It will alert you. School kids crossing alert. And curves, dangerous cur curvatures. This is important because your cart could roll down the hill if you are not aware of a dangerous curves. So these alerts are good. I mean, I would check it. I would enable these alerts. And... The speed alerts, I would probably definitely disable this puppy because it's very hard for me to keep up with the posted speed limit. I always go a little, just a little, itsy bitsy, tiny bit above the speed limit. So this will dr probably drive me nuts. That's why I'm gonna leave this off. Uh, brake planning, this is good. For example, if you're uh, traveling for like tw 10, 15 hours, uh, you need to take a break uh, just to take a nap or take a, a bathroom break or anything and this will plan your breaks. It's important. Now, if you're a truck driver, a semi-truck driver, 18-wheeler professional business driver, by law, you're required to take these breaks. You don't have an option. You must or else you could get a ticket or in some countries such as Germany, you could lose your license if you don't take those preliminary breaks that were assigned by professional by law for the professional drivers okay proximity alerts it will alert you as you get close to a point of interest that you're uh, you know approaching for example a red light it will alert you if you're uh, approaching a speed light or other points of interest you could add types of alerts you could purchase red light alert from Garmin, okay? Okay, maps, we already went, so I guess we covered every aspect in this field. Drive wireless camera, you could add a wireless camera if you wanted to. I don't have a camera attached to this, but you could add a wireless camera. I have a video, a separate video on YouTube about wireless cameras that would go with this puppy, which you can look at. So brightness and uh, timeout modes. So currently it's in automatic mode. Automatic mode means all the screen is dark, writings are white for night. But if you go to day, everything will change to white and the writings will be uh, in uh, black color. Automatic, it will 
determine which one is which. I like the auto because when it gets dark, it will automatically darken your screen. Okay, display timeout is currently two minutes. I don't like that. I don't like display timeouts at all. I'm going to go never, never turn off my display. The last thing you want is to your GPS display to time out on you when you're about to enter an address and you're having a hard time locating the address or if you have to travel and uh, in the middle of your route you don't want the unit to time out on you even though even even with the display timeout usually a GPS will not turn dark on you if you're in the middle of an active route but sometimes it does sometimes the software has a bug I've seen it do that so Screenshot, you could take a picture, a snapshot of the screen. Uh, so it will save it as a JPEG, and then later you could download it or, or share it with your phone. And uh, for example, let's say you go somewhere and you park your car and you want to take a snapshot of the location. So you can change, send that image to your friend and tell them, where did you park? So everybody could see. That's the things you can do or a, a historical site you see, and then you can take a screen, screenshot of that historical site and share it with the pictures that exactly where this was, that historical site. Okay, units and uh, measurements. Uh, you current uh, sets the device clock, the current time, and uh, time format, 12 hours or military hours, and then you, obviously you click this and then you change it. I mean, I don't go to every small thing and waste your time. But uh, the format, it's either 12 hours or it is a 24-hour uh, military, to, like uh, you can change it to 24-hour. Okay, then miles or kilometers. In America and England, you have to use miles. Everywhere else in the world, you have to use kilometers. So that's one thing you need to keep in mind. Mm. And this is how you change it. Okay. So... Position format. This is very advanced. You don't want to mess with that because uh, these are the things for professional navigators and changing that could change your coordinates. So I don't recommend position format. You change that. You know that like you, GPS position is like minute, minute, uh, and then second, uh, the, the location um, of your uh, uh, longitude and latitude, you know, and you don't want to change that because some addresses will be given with coordinates and those addresses or should be entered in that format okay the keyboard language and the, and the keyboard you could change the voice language that that's the language the speaker will speak to you and then you can change the text language now why would be why would these things be different because if you go to a country let's say to russia with a skrillic uh, alphabet then you don't have the alphabet needed to enter the street addresses. So you must change the keyboard. But you still want the unit to speak English for, with you when you're making turns. So that's when you change the text language or the keyboard language, but leave the text and the voice language the same, English. Now, the text language is the language of the menus, like right now. Like right there, it says language and keyboard. That will change. That language will change if you change the text language. Voice language will be only the uh, voice coming out of the speaker. And then the keyboard language is the keyboard with which you enter the addresses. So this you have to change depending on which country you are. If you go to Arabic country, you have to choose Arabic keyboard for the street names. So those are the things. Let's see. Let's see. Display traffic. Okay, so now, now this is the current traffic provider is USA um, uh, and Canada with here you could add other subscriptions so add buy subscriptions from Garmin if you're traveling in another country I have another video on that that shows how to add a subscription for another country so that's uh, and then the type of alerts you can change like what type of alerts you want most alerts you want basic alerts no uh, um, no alerts you know off you, know, you choose that's simple. Like it won't, it will only alert you of major accidents if you choose more uh, basic alerts. And if you say most alerts, even if there's a backup, it more it reminds you, it alerts you. So it's good to have most alerts. You know. Mm, let's see. 
language and keyboard okay this is device information and settings and all that so basically these are the settings now the GPS is ready to navigate however now we're gonna we're gonna show you how to navigate to go somewhere you click on where to and then you could enter the address click OK or you could ask the smart uh, Amazon assistant Alexa to tell you how to go you could go home you could add an address you could go to recent places historical places categories you can choose from national parks and Foursquare is a bunch of businesses instructions uh, intersections uh, coordinates this is the one I was talking about we were in Italy this is my sto true story that the street names were so long nearly 15 characters and very complicated so we asked for the hotel where we were going to give us the coordinates and they gave us the uh, you know the longitude and latitude and that's how we uh, went there and see when you click coordinates you will be given like uh, degrees seconds and minutes and you have to choose make sure to choose north and west accordingly because if this is not north this could be east and west south and you have to choose the correct one south and east north and west if you don't if you don't choose the correct n and w or the co correct letter uh, you, the address the exact same coordinates that's let's say a hotel you're going could be in the middle of the ocean <coughs> all right so that's navigation and view map will show you where you are currently right now i'm indoors so it's locating satellites this is how you play your media if you have music I don't have music in my phone, so I use, you know, Alexa. Alexa, take me to the nearest Starbucks. Would you like directions to Starbucks on 601 Lincoln Road in Miami Beach? Yes. Starting route with Garmin. Okay, getting directions okay now notice those little uh, obviously i'm not in miami i'm in california this is, this thinks it's in miami because we have no satellite signal we are indoors but one thing i would like to mention see those little lines on the streets blue orange red those are uh, the parking possibilities now if it's orange there's like there's a likelihood of you finding parking if it's red you will have no chance that place is so busy you never find parking if it's green, it's usually always empty. You can find parking. If it's blue, means the information about the parking status is not available. You don't know if you can find a parking or not. So those are the things that you need to take in consideration. And then, of course, you have your apps, different apps. You know, owner's manual, you have that. I'm not going to say its name because then will respond. Uh, you have phone, you have weather. Uh, smart notifications that will come on your smartphone or from smartphone comes to this let's say you're using your Garmin and you receive a text message in your smartphone the text message will appear on your Garmin screen huge Garmin screen you could read the text from Garmin screen you could reply it or you could answer the phone from the screen if you want okay this is weather radar shows you how the weather is <clears throat> This is photo live of different traffic conditions. With the photo live, you actually see the actual cars at that time. But again, you have to have internet access through your phone. Trip planner, you can plan your trip to go to, <coughs> excuse me, you could plan your trip to go to point A, B, and C. Let's say you're going, uh, traveling through four or five different countries in Europe, then you could choose. You know, I want to go to Paris, and then I want to go see this place, this trip planner. So, backup camera, where I've been, and so on. Let's see if Alexa can show the map. Alexa, show the map. A map is a symbolic depiction emphasizing relationships between elements of some space, such as objects, regions, or themes. Okay, so that's not good. Uh, but, you know, uh, Alexa can give you all kinds of good uh, information as you drive. For example, you could say, uh, Alexa, play Michael Jackson song. 
Shuffling Songs by Michael Jackson on Amazon Music. Okay. Okay. Now let me tell you something. Let me turn off that. Alexa, stop. Okay. In order to play songs like I just did, you have to have an Amazon account and you have to link your Amazon account with this. I had to do that. I had to go in my smartphone using the this guy right here. I had to link, put, put in my password and link my Amazon account with this in order to have that functionality. If you don't link, if you don't have an Amazon Prime membership or Amazon Music membership, then you will not be able to have that uh, feature. So just so you know, don't think that you can just make it, make it play every song for you. Because uh, if you don't have an Amazon Music account, the limited, there are only limited songs you can listen to. You can't listen to all the songs. Okay, so these were major things that I uh, showed you, but now I'm going to show you some things that are not even disclosed. For example, how to see the satellite signal strength. You press your hand on the sat satellite bars and it will show you how many satellites are there and what the strings are and the GPS coordinates of your location. So that's something little handy to know. And then this is your, your weather condition. Shows you the current weather if you click on that and tells you what's uh, upcoming weather condition and whatnot, or forecast, I should say. And this is your Wi-Fi, you know, shows you your Wi-Fi status. This is your battery status, but now here is the battery. This is the battery status, but a lot of people don't know that if you press and hold your battery, it takes you to, it press and hold the battery icon, it takes you to a diagnostic screen, which I'm going to do right now. You have to hold it for a long time. There you go. So now I'm in the diagnostic screen. It shows me the frequency. It shows me a lot of information, the self-diagnostic, color diagnostic, and uh, screen diagnostic. And next. This is like, you know, you put dots here and there. See that? to check, check the response, like see where it responds. So these are, uh, let's see, what, how do you get out of this? I believe the way out of this is the power button. Okay, now this was the, the screen. Okay, to get out of this, you press the power button and press it again. Power button is here, by the way. This is the power button right there. Okay. So it's now booting up. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you uh, another place where you could completely reset the Garmin GPS. It's loading currently. The loading will take longer when you go to the diagnostic screen. Normally it doesn't take this long. Because I went to the diagnostic screen, it's going longer, and now I have to. This it doesn't. This doesn't happen every time. If you shut down correctly, because I didn't shut down correctly, I went to the diagnostic screen. This came. See now, if I turn it off normal, I turn it off normal. I, it will immediately come. I turn it back on. It's immediate. It doesn't take that bar and loading and all that. So that's it. Those are, this is the volume. Oh, another thing. <coughs> this is important too. In the volume screen, this is your volume screen. If you press and hold your hand in the upper right corner, look what it, where it takes you. These are the secrets that they don't teach you. It takes you to that diagnostic page. Here, you could clear all user da data. You could go to demo mode or undo demo mode. You could go to the configuration and setting. You could go to the developer info. You could go to the developer test and tools and diagnostic. Log. Now, these are things you, an average user don't need to know. So you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, so that's basically, I, I believe I covered everything. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, 
please feel free to ask. Yeah, I will be glad to provide information. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.